There are many ancient methods for preserving food that have stood the test of time, despite the invention of the refrigerator. And these methods last because they add flavor and texture to otherwise simple ingredients. Confit is a good case in point, and today, Britt is going to tell us more. I am here to represent ancient cooking <laughs> techniques and preservation <laughs> techniques. <laughs> we are going to use confit to really elevate turkey. Mm. So it's going to really make it special. You can use this for Thanksgiving or anytime you have a special occasion. So let me take you through the process. This is four pounds of turkey thighs. Mm -hmm. They're full of collagen. And during cooking, that's going to convert into gelatin. So you get that really rich and silky texture. OK. The first process when making confit is you want to cure the meat. Now, curing usually involves salt. Lots and lots and lots of salt. And you pack the meat and you let it sit over time. That salt starts to work its way into the meat and really give it a different texture. We're going to use the time factor, the fact that this is going to cure for several days, to add some flavor as well. So I've got onions. A lot of onions. A lot of onions. This is three large onions. And I'll add this into my food processor. And now we're going to add a little bit of flavor here. Mm. 12 sprigs, stems, leaves and all, fresh thyme. There's tons of flavor in those sprigs. So now we need to get to the curing agent and that is salt. This is just plain table salt. We're using two and a half tablespoons, four and a half teaspoons of sugar. It's going to really balance out the flavor. And one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. Gesundheit. <laughs> I'm going to let this process for about 20 seconds, but I'm looking for the onions to be finely chopped. All right, looking pretty good. So I've got a nine by 13 inch baking dish. You wanna use something that's non-reactive since mm -hmm. the meat and the onions are gonna be in there for a little while. We're gonna take a third of this mixture, plop it in there and just spread it out in the bottom of the pan here. And now four pounds of bone in turkey thighs just goes right on there. We wanna make sure that they are all in one layer, meat side down so that they're nestled in that onion mixture. I'm going to add the rest of this onion mixture right over the top. I'm gonna to put a little bit of plastic wrap on this. We're gonna need a little bit of time for all these water soluble compounds to work their way into the meat. Now we say a little bit of time, how much time? Four days. <laughs> so you have to plan in advance for this. You do. It's a minimum of four days, really, to allow that flavor to get to the bone and the salt as well. But you can leave it in the fridge for up to six days. So oh. if you're planning ahead and six days works out better for you, no problem. So in order to make a turkey confit with a deep, savory flavor and tender texture, you first have to cure the meat. Now here's how curing works. Before cooking the turkey thighs, we coat them with salt paste and let them sit in the refrigerator for four days. Now as the salt dissolves, it naturally moves from places of high concentration to places of low concentration by winding its way between the meat fibers. This is called diffusion. As the salt passes through the meat, it makes it firmer and juicier. Now, four days is not long enough for the salt to be perfectly even throughout. That can take weeks, but it's plenty of time for this recipe because we're curing for flavor, not for preservation. After four days of curing, this is what the turkey looks like. Interesting. Now, I've rinsed off three of them. Mm -hmm. There's one still in there. You can see the meat is a little bit darker in yeah. places. That's totally normal. Okay. If you wouldn't mind turning the water on, I'm going to rinse the rest of these aromatics, the onion mixture off. I'll go ahead and scrape some of it and just rinse it under running water. I just want to get any particulates off of the turkey because we're going to get ready to put it in fat. Gotcha. And I don't want anything to go in there to start to brown. That makes sense. All right, so that looks great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move it over here. I need to blot these dry as much as I can. I will flip them over. They're resting on paper towels. That's smart. Let's talk about what's in yeah. the measuring cup. This is pure duck fat, mm. which is traditional for making confit. Now you could use chicken fat. If you don't have a source for duck fat, you can actually buy it online now. Mm -hmm. Or you can use vegetable oil. Again, six cups total, but really duck fat is the premium choice here. And I'm gonna show you that you can reuse it again. Okay. So it's not just like you're gonna break the bank here <laughs> and never see it again. It will come back and serve you time and time again. Okay. So six cups. I'm going to add it to my Dutch oven here. Just scoop it in there. I'm going to put this over medium heat and we're going to melt the fat. Now we're not going to fry this. We're going to start to confit. So we want a really low temperature to start and that's going to be 165. That's very low. Very low. That's on purpose. Okay. All right. So let's check the fat here and we are looking for right about 165. 
All right, 165. Just barely melted. Just barely melted. So we're gonna go ahead and add our turkey in there. Mm -hmm. Skin side down. It's a really low heat, so you're not going to see any vigorous bubbling. Again, we're not frying. Taking my time to make sure that they're fully submerged. A lot of people might be scared seeing all that meat going into fat and thinking, that's going to be greasy. Mm -hmm. But the meat really doesn't suck up the fat. In fact, the fat allows the moisture in the meat to stay inside the meat. It's mm. really, really gentle heat. Now, a couple of additions here. Two bay leaves and a whole head of garlic. Cut it right in half. We're gonna nestle those down in there. So we're done with stovetop cooking. Okay. Don't need it anymore. We're gonna move this operation to the oven. Mm -hmm. And it's really low, 200 degree oven. If it was at a higher temperature, it might start to simmer a little bit. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. It's gonna cook for four, maybe up to five hours. And what I wanna look for is the meat to become nice and tender. Mm, well, I don't see any bubbling. <laughs> We're bubble free. <laughs> so I just need to check the turkey mm -hmm. and see if the meat is really, really nice and tender. So I'm gonna take a metal skewer, pierce it into the meat, and it really shouldn't pull up from the bottom of the Dutch oven, like that. Turkey is nice and tender. You need to get it out of the pot. You can use tongs for this, but I like to kind of zhuzh it onto a little skimmer here just to support it. And then we're gonna put this onto our rack. I don't want to disturb the skin. The skin is really rendered and very, very thin at this point. Oh, it is delicate skin. Isn't that? Yes. That's really well rendered. All of that mm -hmm. turkey fat that was underneath the skin is in the pot, making the duck fat even more tasty. So now we need to deal with what to do with this duck fat. Mm -hmm. I see kind of a layer of turkey juice underneath the fat. So we need to separate the two. I'm just gonna strain this mixture through a fine mesh strainer over a bowl. All right, so now we wanna separate the fat from the juices. And I'm gonna use something called a fat separator mm. for such a job. There we go, and I'm gonna to have to do this obviously in batches. So I'm gonna let this sit for about five minutes, allow the fat to separate, and then we'll pour it off. All right, Julia, you gotta keep <laughs> them separated. <laughs> Those are two beautiful bowls of golden liquid. That's right, I've separated all the fat, from this beautiful liquid. Mm. And you can see not a lot came out during cooking. That's good, that means it's still in the turkey. And that's an intensely flavored broth. It sure is. Now we're gonna use some of it at this point to make a kind of sauce. We're doing something a little bit different from a gravy here. I think you're gonna like it. So I need four teaspoons of this beautiful turkey broth. And I'm going to add it to a half a cup of orange marmalade. Okay. We got that backbone of the turkey broth in there, some brightness from the orange marmalade, a little sweetness too. Now the marmalade is a little thick, a little chunky. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave for about 30 seconds until the marmalade is nice and fluid. A few bits in there, but that is the marmalade. It's steaming. Let me just whisk this together. So to this, I'm going to add some whole grain mustard. This is two tablespoons and two tablespoons of freshly squeezed lime juice. That is three quarter teaspoons of fresh grated lime zest. Oh, you can smell it as soon as it hits there. Mm -hmm. All right, a little salt. This is a quarter teaspoon of table salt and an eighth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. All right, so that looks phenomenal, smells great. So I've hiked the oven temperature to 500 degrees. Really good blast. And these are gonna go in there until they're really deep brown. That's gonna take maybe 15 minutes. Whoa. Goodness. That went from zero to 60 like that. That is the payoff. 15 minutes of 500 degree oven and look what a change. All right, <laughs> but we do need to let this cool down, allow any of those juices to be reabsorbed into the meat and of course, cool enough for us to eat. 15 minutes is plenty of time to let these cool down and they are still hot, mm -hmm. but cool enough to handle and that's really important because we wanna make a nice presentation of these. All right, so I'm gonna flip this over and we wanna remove this bone. So I'm gonna take a paring knife and I just want to eke it around the bone. I mean, it's basically popping out. Look at that. Oh, that's a good sign. And I'll flip this back over. 
And now we want to take care to preserve the skin. So you can use a slicing knife or a really, really sharp chef's knife, something that's really going to cut through easily. So I'm going to make the cuts perpendicular to where the bone was. Just makes it really pretty slices that way. And I'm going to cut three quarter inch slices. Oh, look at that meat. It is so tender. Almost falling apart. You can see steam coming out of there. That turkey thigh is still hot. Super juicy. Look at that. I've got to go ahead and bone out these turkey thighs and then slice them too. All right. What do you think? I think I'm hungry. <laughs> right. How many pieces would you like? Yes. Yes. All right. <laughs> Let me suss you up here. That skin is mahogany. I know. It's gorgeous. All right. Because it is a very potent sauce. I'm do a little restaurant -y thing going on here. Can we uh, have a moment to celebrate yeah, go, all go the ahead. duck fat that's done for us? <laughs> go on. <laughs> Enjoy it. I am diving in. You're already in. Uh-huh. Mmm. Mmm. That is the most amazing turkey meat I've ever eaten. It is tender, it is seasoned throughout, falling off the bone. Mm -hmm. I actually think it tastes like the gravy is inside the meat. Well, that actually makes sense since all the juice stayed in the meat. Bridget, this is incredible. You coming over? <laughs> yes, anytime. Thank you. You bet. To make this incredibly luscious turkey confit, coat turkey thighs with an onion salt paste and refrigerate for several days. Submerge in duck fat and cook at 200 degrees for several hours. Then finish in a 500 degree oven just before serving. From America's Test Kitchen, a decadent new take on the Thanksgiving centerpiece, turkey thigh confit with a citrus mustard sauce. Can't wait to make this for people. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.